Good evening and welcome everyone to another um, Google Hangout here live from our EHF offices in Vienna. Well, it's another premiere. It's not the VLUX EHF Champions League we're talking about. It's not the MVM EHF Final Four we're talking about. It is the Men's EHF Cup Finals we're talking about. And nevertheless, I welcome very familiar faces that you know from previous Hangouts and the newcomer tonight. First of all, Bon anniversaire. Um, happy birthday to um, our French journalist, Kevin. Bon Thanks very much. Good evening. Kisses from Tom. Hi, Tom. How are you? Uh, very well. I'd just like to mention that I had to mention it was my own birthday in the last <laughs> time it was a hangout, but uh, Kevin gets a mention. What's going on? I'm more popular than you. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a difference, Tom. You, you know, it was your birthday the day after the hangout. That is true. <laughs> Um, a very familiar face as well, Bjorn. Hi, Bjorn. How are you? Hi, Thomas. No birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> and our new face for today, our Hangout debutant, Adrian, who joins us from Romania. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Hello. Very fine, thanks. Waiting for the final four. <laughs> very um, welcome, you. And obviously, you'll uh, fill us in about all the latest news from Constanta. Um, talking about the EHF Cup Finals in Berlin, which uh, will be upon us in just about four days' time. Tom, what a, what a selection, you know, four, four teams, all um, Champions League participants. Uh, what did you think when you saw the lineup for this tournament? Well, it was like it was fate, wasn't it, Thomas? Uh, Bjorn will probably agree with me. And uh, welcome, Adrian. It's good to see you. And happy birthday, Ian Kevin. Um, I think it, it was it was almost like it was fate. And if you look at the results uh, from those kind of wild card knockout matches, and when you look at um, uh, when you think that three of the teams that were beaten, the teams that beat them in the in the Champions League wild card, went on to qualify for the knockout phase, and then you look at Constanta, who were beaten by Porto. Uh, of course, Porto didn't get that far. I'm sorry to mention that, Adrian. Um, so these four teams, very strong and very similar to teams that we would know from the Champions League. So, except perhaps Constanta, they're they're kind of a little bit of an unknown quantity to anybody outside of Romania, or anybody who follows um, teams called Constanta. So um, it's you know the other three teams. If we look at Berlin, if we look at Seged, and if we look at Montpellier, very strong teams, Thomas. And by the way, having watched a good few of uh, Constanta's match, they're going to be a tough tough enough to crack as well. So slightly a little bit of fate, I think, for all these four teams to make it this far. Um, yeah, do you agree? Fate? Um, expected? Surprises for you? How do you see these, uh, so, this uh, Berlin lineup? So I, I would say Montpellier, Sheget and uh, Berlin were among the, the teams which had been nominated by all coaches to go uh, until the final tournament. Constanta is a little bit surprised for me, but uh, they, they had a brilliant group phase, the, they tied with Berlin, they beaten Chambéry, so they deserved to have a little bit of luck in the, in the quarterfinals facing Lugi. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the end it was a decision, what uh, Kevin also would say, uh, the, the hottest quarterfinal was Nantes with Montpellier, and uh, Constanta was lucky in the draw. So uh, I'm really looking forward to see them in, in Berlin. So three teams are, are quite quite normal to have them there, and uh, Constanta will be the dark horse. Um, Adrian, do you agree? Are they a dark horse, or are they uh, actually more than that? Yes, they should be a dark horse, because they uh, were very disappointed not to, to go in the um, EHF uh, Champions League groups. Um, it was a big disappointment for um, the Romanian handball also. But um, they uh, had a very good season in the AHF Cup. They, uh, as Bjorn said, they uh, managed a draw against um, uh, Fixe Berlin. Um, they won against Chambry. And then, of course, they had a little bit of luck, of luck to, to go into um, the quarterfinals against uh, Lugilund. So um, I think they will be a dark horse, but um, it, uh, Constanza is a very, very good team with a very good coach and a very good group and should, uh, should put problems on Montpellier uh, in, the, in the first game. Mm. Tell, tell us a bit more, why do they deserve to be there? They deserve to be there because they are very, very good as a group. Um, uh, coach Zvonko Sundowski told us that um, he uh, managed to impose his will in the team uh, in the second year, he's, um, in uh, his second year at Constanza, and um, are very, very good on, uh, in defense and also have um, great uh, weapons on offense. Um, you should uh, know about Shimiku, a very good um, and tall 
back, also Czepergi, also experienced players like Hai Popescu or uh, Laurentiu Toma, who played uh, very uh, long in the Champions League. So they are like, an experienced team, um, a good coach and a good defense. So this should be their main advantages uh, going into the final four. Um, what's the talk about Constanta and, and Montpellier in France, Kevin? Uh, is that a team they are um, afraid of? Um, I think they're taking Constanta very seriously. Uh, we don't know much about them, but given that they've beaten Chambéry once and they've uh, had a draw uh, in Chambéry, uh, it's a team that uh, Patrice Canaille uh, takes very seriously. There is no stars in Constanta, you know, there is no big names, but it's a very uh, workman uh, workman team, you know, working very hard, and there is no there is no real flow. Uh, they've got very strong defense, and they've got uh, wingers that go very, very fast in fast breaks. So I think it's taken very seriously, and nobody uh, in Montpellier uh, thinks that they're in the final already. You know, they're going to play very seriously on Saturday. Thomas, what's the story of Kevin Dumas? Is he is he saving all his energy? He looks like he's lying in bed there, saving all his energy for going out on his birthday night. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> No. Wait. Wait. Wake him up. Wake him up, Tom. Wake him up, Tom. And um, tell, tell, tell us what you think about uh, this Constanta team and and Montpellier. I mean, Montpellier is obviously a team you've been been following uh, just because of your Champions League job very closely in the last few years. Absolutely. And uh, looking looking back at the team again, very young team, I think, and uh, look very strong. They have Grebi playing back on the left wing again, as far as I can see, and they have Acombre. Uh, they have Simone, the Argentinian stroke Spanish guy in the middle. Uh, they've got Dolanets in the left back, Kaptichnik that they can bring on. They've got Gaic on the wing. They've got Gaber on the line. I mean, this is a strong Montpellier team. And then they have Omayer in goal. And he's worth, well, Bjorn, what's he worth in a game? Omayer, he's worth, he's worth just, a, he's worth a better, he's worth a win nearly every time he goes on the court. What I don't like about this Constanta team, Thomas, I'm going to put it out there. We have to talk about something, and if we're all being too nice to people, they are dirty as hell in the defense. They are one of the dirtiest teams I've ever seen playing defense. People say they have a strong defense. I think they're just they're just on the border of of being over physical. They bring on Angelovsky slow. Adzic looks like he only has to look at you to to worry you. And then they've got this guy called uh, Christescu. Who's worth? He's worth a red card every game he plays. He's only a young lad. He's only 21 years of age, and he's now you got to give it to him. He puts his heart and soul into defending. But my goodness me, sometimes he'd take a guy out. And uh, so I think Montpellier, if they if they can battle through that, because Montpellier are the more are the more fluid side. By the way, Constanta make a lot of changes. Adrian Wright, they make a lot of changes in the defense and attack. You know. Yes. Uh, I'd uh, and Adzic and Jalowski are always playing in uh, mostly in defense. Adzic always in defense. That's right. And uh, and then you have and then you've got this guy Simiku who's about two meters tall playing up front who's uh, very good. Chipregi, Chipregi, is that how you say it, Adrian? And Chipregi. then you've got another guy. Now listen to this, Thomas. This will tell you how much I've worked. Kriccio <laughs> how, how did that sound? Did that sound Romanian? Kriccio Toyu. Kriccio Toyu. Yes. Ah, that, that's that's an unusual name for Romanian also. <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, it's not only unusual for Romanians, it's unusual for Ireland. I, I, I think that the I woke all the owls up every time I was pronouncing the names doing the commentary, you know. Everyone's name ends with ooh, you know. So, um, no, tough in defense, uh, Adrian, agreed, but slightly dirty. And, uh, you know, of the, of, the, of the teams, they are they're an unknown package because Montpellier maybe won't have been used to playing against this kind of defense, you know, which is which is just borderline kind of scary for me. Adrian, I think that demands um, a quick response from you. And then after that, I'd like to ask um, Kevin um, literally the question that Tom just asked. Are Montpellier prepared to, you know, and are they um, rehearsed enough to play against a defense um, such as Constante? But first of all, Adrian. Tom's answer, uh, the answer for Tom lies in the first minutes of the game uh, Constanza against Lugi in Constanza. Um, I don't know, I don't remember the, the player of Lugi who went out injured, but he went on a stretcher after a collision with Shimiku. So 
uh, I think Tom's right. I think he's very right. And uh, Constanza, if uh, the team uh, is playing like this in the final four, they should get a lot of uh, of expulsions. But that's the way Shandowski uh, loves to play. That's the main emphasis he put on the team, the defense. And I think he he's quite right to do so because Constanza isn't a team with great values, uh, with great individual players. I mean, and uh, they have to act as a team and uh, be very good in defense to to go far further. So a, a tough defense. If uh, that's what uh, Montpellier is up for, Kevin, are they are they prepared for that and can they handle it? I I think they're prepared for that, and I think their their game plan is going to be playing very fast. You know, play play quick, fast breaks um, after Omiya's save, and just to you know provoke uh, two minutes suspensions. And you know that's the way they can get around this defense because they are taller than uh, Constantas players are taller than Montpellier's players. They are uh, tougher, and I think that by playing fast and by playing, uh, you know, making the the the, the ball live and I don't, yeah, I think it's gonna. That's the key of the game, and I think they're really conscious of this. Uh, playing very fast and uh, provoking uh, too many suspensions, and then uh, taking the advantage. I think that's what they they're prepared to. They're very yeah. fluid, Thomas. They're very fluid. Yeah, that's that's they're, it. They're really, they're, their movement is really good. I have to say, kind of uh, Patrice has done a great job down there. You know, he's lost a lot of players. They don't seem to have as much money anymore. And yet this team looks looks very strong. And if we think about a lot of those players like Bunfon and uh, Greby were only kind of young boys coming into that team when they were at that kind of height of uh, you know qualifying for knockout stage. Two years down the line, they look they look big, strong boys, but they're still very young, very fast. And the two Slovenians, I, I talk about the two they bought last year from Grenja Valenia. Uh, Dolanets looks even better than he did when he was with Grenja Valenia. Would you agree, yeah. Kevin? He really, really good. Yeah, and the thing is, you you named a couple of players uh, earlier on, but you you for I'm you forgot like uh, Gigu, who's a key player in the, the team. Yeah. They've got, they've got a, an amazing bench, and I I think they by playing fast, you know, they can rotate players, they can change players, and still keep uh, you know good quality, a good play quality. So I think that's going to be one of the the, the key of the game. Mm. Bjorn, how do you how do you see this uh, this game? Um, a chance for Constanta, an easy passage for Montpellier. How do you? I, I would say that uh, Montpellier, what we did not mention by now, uh, has great confidence at the moment. They beat Paris Saint Germain last week in the league, and uh, they're back in the race for the Champions League for the next season. So this this should be a, a boost for Montpellier. And I I would absolutely agree with Kevin that in my uh, opinion the key figures of this match will be Thierry Omaier and Ivan Gaic. Because uh, if Omaier saves, as he saves at big matches, and then uh, Montpellier will start their, their counter-attacks, then they, they can really get uh, a big distance very early without giving all the powers. But, as mentioned by, by, Andrew, uh, by, by Tom, is that, uh, that if Constanza, the longer Constanza plays on the same level as, as Montpellier, they might get nervous because the pressure in this match, in my opinion, is clearly on, on Montpellier. Maybe Montpellier is already calculating a little bit, saying, okay, we can save some power for the final, as we definitely know that the opponent from the, from the other semifinal will lose a lot of power in, the, in this tough duel. But uh, I think uh, Patrice Cagnaille is, uh, is clever enough to have respect. So in my opinion, it's a, it's a match for, for Montpellier, but uh, depending on the number of, of counterattacks they can go, uh, this will, um, in the end, uh, save the, the distance between both teams. Uh, Thomas, let's Adrian. not forget, sorry, just before, I just because I want to throw this at Adrian, because Popescu is a very good goalkeeper as well. I mean, we've got four absolutely top-class goalkeepers playing in this. Any one of them, in my opinion, could play in any Champions League team. And Popescu is very good. And this Budicia boy, did I say that right, Adrian? Buricia. How? Huh? Buricia. How did you say Buricia, Buricia, yes. Yeah. Thomas, I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> chap. He's very, he's very quick. You know, he's he's good, and 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 uh, this Popescu boy can find him. I mean, Montpellier aren't going to be the only ones uh, with counterattacks. 
Yes, Burica, Burica is very experienced and uh, he doesn't look uh, he doesn't lose his head in such a game. So he will be focused on um, all the game. Also, Toma is a very good and very experienced uh, wing. So you should also be wary of Constanza's uh, counterattacks. Um, Björn, Björn mentioned like the, um, the the ability of that they have to to play on the on the same level on the same high level for the for the entire 60 minutes if they want to have a chance. Are they are they able to do that from from your point of view, Adrian? Can they keep up one level for like an entire game? I don't think uh, if Constanza is um, going to have some shots um, saved by Omer, I don't have I don't think that they will be able to keep the um, the whole game at the same level. Uh, mentally, they are very good, but you need um, they need very much um, the defense. To, to act quickly and to, to stop Montpellier's attacks. And how Tom said, they need to, to be dirty to, to stop these attacks. So uh, if they can um, achieve uh, that level at uh, for 60 minutes in defense and both in offense, very physical game, I think they will be able to, to stay close to Montpellier. But it's a very hard task, uh, task to ask. Thomas, that's, that's very interesting what Adrian says there. And what Bjorn has said, that if they can stay, that uh, Montpellier might get, start getting nervous. The fact of the matter is that this coach only seems to keep the same seven players in attack, and then he rotates a few for, um, for defensive purposes. As I said, this guy, Simiku, he's got 55 goals, he's two meter tall. Uh, Cipregi, who's <laughs> it's the best I can say it, Adrian, um, he's good. But they don't really have a great line player. You know, and if you look at Montpellier, they've got Gaber and they've got Tej. Is Tej still fit, Kevin? Yes, he is. They've got Tej and they've got uh, they've got Gaber. Serious Champions League experience between the two of them. Really, really very different line players, but very experienced both of them. And uh, and 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 Kanaye just has, as Kevin says, more players to bring on. So we've got freshness. If there is a surprise, and I say if then I would imagine Constanta could be absolutely knackered by the time Sunday comes around because they don't have this huge... I mean, they've got 14 or 16 players, but he doesn't use them, this uh, Shundovsky guy. Um, whereas Kanaye does use his team. Although, Kevin, I have to ask about Kaptichnik. In the matches I've seen, he hasn't been utilised that much. Is, is he 100% fit or is he... he, or is he, he he's completely fit. The thing is, Dolinec is so good. And mm. Gaig is just, you know, you, you can't replace him, he's scoring 10, 10 goals a game, so there is no room for Kaptichnik at the moment. He's playing a little bit as a middle back, he's playing a bit at a, as a right back when Dolinec is a bit tired, but he's not playing much. You know, the, 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 two, the two Slovenian guys on the right side are so good that there is no need to replace them. Yeah, um, they, get, they speak the same language. But what a great player, Thomas, to be able to bring on. Right, Bjorn? Kaptichnik, Champions League winner? They, they can bring him on as a substitute. Incredible. Yes, that, but that's you, what you have to see. I, I agree with Kevin because uh, I saw Dolanet last season already, as you also saw in, uh, in, in Champions League. And uh, as uh, Tom would also say, he's an unpolished diamond and uh, he's exactly at the right place now. Uh, to get uh, to use to national and international competition with Montpellier. So maybe the time of Witkow Tichnik uh, has come to an end in Montpellier someday as they will consider that uh, Gajic uh, is the number one on the wing and Dolinets Dol will be the number one on the right back. So maybe this is the, the last chance for Wick to take a big title with Montpellier. Mm. Uh, so I'll tell you, Thomas, they're very they're a very young team as well, this Montpellier team. I mean, they have a great future ahead of them. If they can make the Champions League next year... But the thing is, they're young, but they're still experienced. Yeah, you no, know? I agree. But they have a lot of time together if they, if they, if they can yeah. keep them together, you know? Uh, individually, they've, they've played the Champions League, every one of them. So, you know, we've got some... Uh, you know what's going to happen, Thomas? Adrian's just going to go to bed and cry tonight now after... <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I think I think it's not going to be that bad. I think like if I if I sum up what we just talked about, um, there's um, probably like a you know 60, 40, 70, 30 chance for um, you know for Montpellier to reach the final, but that still doesn't rule out um, a surprise by Constanta. Um, I think but, Thomas, if you, if you know your mathematics, 70, 30 absolutely rules out a surprise. For Constanta. <laughs> <laughs> um, 40 maybe you gave a chance. Um, Björn, if if we assume that um, that Montpellier reaches the final, who are they going to face? Um, Saget or Fuchs Berlin? 
this is a highly interesting question because uh, usually uh, everybody says, okay, uh, Fuchs are the host and uh, they are backed by 7,000, 7,500 spectators and uh, there you have the experience from uh, Champions League Final Four. But the problem of the Fuchs at the moment is they have such a long series of injured players, mainly of backcourt players, that... Uh, that they really face problem with this. So uh, Dago Sigurdsson is unfortunately in a situation where he does not have so many choices, mainly for the backcourt position. So uh, there was, maybe you saw it in, uh, in, in the handball news, there was an interesting day-to-day uh, -day for Füchse because they made uh, five, six years contract with their youngest players, 18, 19 year old players like Paul Drucks, for example. And uh, they are building up a real, real young team. And as you saw already last season and this season, players like Vida or, or Drugs get the chance to, to play in major competitions. And maybe he will, uh, da, Dago Sigurdsson will meet them on, on Saturday and Sunday uh, because players like um, Sven Sören Christoffersen and others are injured. And uh, he's a very, very small squad at the moment. But who knows that uh, what they are able to in, in the Max Schmeling arena and they are absolutely focused on, on this tournament. They said this season we want to win a title. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately they won their title already by becoming German Cup champion, what nobody expected in this. And, uh, and they made a big party of it, but they saying, okay, we tasted uh, how it feels to raise a trophy, so we want to do it again. So the motivation and everything will be on the side of Füchse. But when you look at the, at the squad of Pick Seget and look at the experience of their coach, uh, Pastor, this will be a real, real close match. So, and it will be a real tough fight. And this is what I say now, where if Montpellier has the chances uh, to decide the match very early and can save some powers, they are also the favorite for the final because their opponent, either it will be Füchse or it will be Seget, uh, they will lose a lot of power on Saturday. Mm. So, uh, can I ask yeah, you? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask Bjorn something about Christofferson because I realised that he'd been out injured for the season, but apparently he'd come back to play a couple of games there in the Bundesliga. Is that correct? Yes, uh, but uh, it was uh, the first steps of uh, of return. It was not. Uh, he cannot play the role as he usually plays. So he is so in the, the, He might be in the squad, but uh, he's not on uh, far away from one hundred percent. Okay, so do they still have? Are they still playing that uh, that centre back partnership of uh, Igropolo, Yashka, and uh, and um, Romero? Yes, of course they have. They have Igropolo, Yashka, and Igropolo in the last weeks is playing a brilliant, brilliant uh, final stage of the season. He decided together with goalkeeper Silvio Einefetter, he decided the German Cup final and uh, became the most valuable player there. So, Igopolo is in a great form, but uh, this is on the right back position, the left back position, they're really, they're switching between Yashka and Romero, and you know, Romero uh, cannot stand 60 minutes. Uh, he's, he's coming in as a joker, he's brilliant as a joker, but uh, they have to switch uh, a lot of players in the backcourt. Okay. Uh, Tom, Tom can, I, can I throw this at you, or the um, you all for in general? What is it with the, you know, success of... Um, um, Spanish coaches at the moment in handball with, you know, Pasto for Seged, um, Ortega for Vesprem, um, and I think we can easily include um, Martin Ambrosch for Gear as well in there. Well, you should include him in there. He's won something. The other two haven't won anything. What are you talking about? I mean, all right, okay, sorry. Sorry, uh, Carlos, of course you've won the Hungarian League. But, no, but I mean, um, the, Ambrose is the only one who's won a European title. Um... And Carlos Ortega, uh, it's uh, has to go to uh, to play Kiel, who are banging in the goals at the moment. They've been they beat Flensburg by eight last week or something. Am I right, Bjorn? Yeah, eight. 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 Yeah. I mean, hello. I would be I'd be a little bit worried if I was about Prem. But we're not talking about the Champions League, Thomas. I hate the way you do this. You all you had to do, all you had to do, is find your way back to Pastor and second. Okay, I'm gonna find my way back to Pastor. All right, here's 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 my bag. Picks again is basically the same uh, the same core of players that they that they had before. So in the right back position they've got Anchin and they've got Bala. Now Anchin's a good player and he and he did I think he did uh, was uh, I'm sure he was playing up at the Euros. Bjorn will tell me because he remembers probably Anchin when he was playing the under tens in Belarusia, you know, <laughs> some village. Bjorn remembers that stuff. Anyway, I only uh, remember that he had a great Euro this year. 
<laughs> there you go. Told you, Thomas. I knew something in the back of my head told me he had a great Euro. So he had a great Euro, but I've been watching him in the. Uh, I've been watching him, and Pastor's been playing him out in the right wing position. You know, two meters tall. The guy just doesn't have the speed for that. Um, they've got this young guy, uh, Lasica, uh, playing out there as well. Uh, he's 26 years of age, a Montenegro boy. Not bad, but not great. And they also have uh, Parondo, but I haven't seen him play. So unless we've got some Hungarian expert who can tweet us and tell us whether uh, Roberto Parondo has been playing in the right uh, the right wing position, uh, they may have a little bit of a problem out in that position there. Okay. In the center, they've got this Spanish kid. Oh my God, Mindegi is his name. 25 years of age. The boy is greased lightning. I'm telling you, you've got to see this boy play. He's absolutely magnificent. He moves left, right. I'm doing the movement, Thomas, for you. That's the way he goes. You don't know which way he's going to go. He plays the ball. Um, he's really good. You've got Shellman playing in the left wing, who we all know is a fantastic player. And then they've got this guy, Pürze, playing in the left back, who's absolute rubbish. I mean, he's rubbish. He can't run. He can't jump. He can't play the ball. He loses the ball. I mean... I do not know what they're going to do. Their left back position is a real problem. They've got Ilyish who can play, but this left back guy, uh, Perza, is, is not on the case. Anybody who's telling me, now if Bjorn is telling me that these guys are, that Berlin is having some problems uh, injury wise, then maybe uh, we've got to say this is even Stevens. But if, if Berlin can put a strong team out, they can beat the Seged team. I'm not. I'm not looking at them as being something absolutely extraordinary. I I agree. I only said that everybody's saying, "Oh, the home team is always the favorite and everything." But uh, it, in my opinion, it will be a close match. Of course, they can win, but we have to see. Kevin, which team would Montpellier uh, be more afraid of, and and, and why? I think. Like uh, Fight in a potential final. Well, I th I think uh, they'd be more afraid of uh, Berlin because you know playing against the host in the final is going going to be tough. Uh, in France, we were a bit you know uh, taken aback by uh, Seged's defeat in Nantes when they uh, lost by ten goals, I think, uh, and it showed that they can have off nights. They can have nights where where they play bad de bad handball. While Berlin seems very strong, you know they're playing the Bundesliga. They are fifth in the Bundesliga, which is always uh, proof of your quality. And there is something that nobody has talked about, but which I think is a major factor uh, in this, uh, you know, in these finals. It's that it's the last chance for Ike Romero to to win a trophy, because he's going to retire after uh, at the end of the season. And I think they, Berlin has won the the German Cup. Uh, not so long ago, and I really think he would like to win another trophy, and that's going to be an extra mot uh, motivation, both for him and for his team. And I think uh, Patrice Canaille is very afraid of uh, facing Berlin in the in the in the final. If Montpellier makes it to the final, he made a nice sentence regarding exact this situation. He said, uh, "I made a short interview for him for a German media, and he said, okay, I want to play the role of Rhein-Neckar Löwen last season.'" Which means going to the final and beating those. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Thomas, on the on the issue on the issue of looking at, at teams, if we look at individually in all the positions, I think Berlin is stronger than 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 Seged, and uh, and that's the fact. And Seged's team is not. You've got uh, this Mendigia guy, as I said, and you've got Subai on the line, who have a great understanding, by the way. But left and right back, all right, Balak is good, but he's not absolutely fantastic, you know. And in the left back position, they've got real problems. And if Berlin, who, and like I said, it's difficult to see any Berlin games playing in playing in Europe, but Bjorn would see them regularly in, in the Bundesliga. And if they're just outside the Champions League spots, Bjorn, am I right? They're just fifth place at the moment? They must yes, be doing they're something. Definitely, right? They're definitely out for Champions League, yeah. Okay, but so probably a wild card. But what I'm saying is they're fifth in the Bundesliga with the likes of Tumler, Drucks, Vida, guys we know that uh, that uh, Bob and Dagger have been uh, grooming for success since they were in the final four. They must be doing something right, Bjorn. I mean, they can't be in that position and and uh, you know and winning the German Cup and not be doing something right. Whereas I look at the second team and I'm sort of saying to myself, I don't quite think Pastor's really got his completely what he wants his own team or he has these guys playing the way he wants them to play? Well, I think, can I, can I add a word? 
I think, yeah, it's be, I think it's going to be very interesting to see who wins the battle of the goalkeepers because you've got uh, Silvio Heinevetter on one side and you've got Mikla on the other side. Mikla who's going to live at the end of the season. And I think Silvio is fit, Bjorn. Is he? Silvio, Silvio is fit, yes. And Silvio is yeah. hungry and uh, you just need to see how, how crazy he will be. Okay. No, Mikla is hungry, isn't he? <laughs> Silvio is Germany. Sorry, sorry, about that. sorry, about that, <laughs> who, who's the, who's the best goalkeeper among the four? You've been talking so much about these goalkeepers. Who's the best, Adrian? I think I really think that Omeya is the best because he has the experience. He has he when he goes into um, these periods of time in which he he becomes unbeatable. So I really I really think that he will make the difference both in uh, in the game against Constanza and uh, also if. Uh, Montpellier qualifies in uh, in the final. Is Omaier still better than uh, Heine Fetter? Yeah. I would say it depends on the day of Omaier. When you saw him the last season in Kiel, he had days where where he had a hammer, a nail, and wood in his hands, and no ball could ever go into this goal. But he also had days when you after ten minutes he only had one or two saves. He got angry about himself. Then he was changed, and then. As Kevin also knows, if you take Omayer of the out of the goal, you have to is like a tiger in a cage. Yeah. So it really on Omayer it depends on his first five six uh, actions, and then if he's in the match, then he's definitely the best in the tournament. But uh, you know, uh, Silvio Einerfetter sometimes he saves balls as nobody else could do because sometimes he got a, a movement or an action and he's uh, down on the floor with a uh, with his arm or he's in the in the air with his leg and. Uh, this is this is what uh, maybe attackers get crazy. So, but I still say Omayer is a little bit better. Kevin, you wanted to, you wanted to. Uh, add something I, just, or? I just wanted to 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 agree with Bjorn because uh, I don't know if you remember uh, last season's Champions League final four uh, where Omayer played with Kiel and he he didn't make any save, you know. So it's very he he can have off nights as well while uh, he can be very very good, uh, you know. He, Basically, won both games in the quarterfinals against Nantes. So I, I think uh, Omeya is a bit better, but he, he can have off nights uh, from time to time. He must be doing something right, Thomas. PSG just bought him. Yeah, I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he's he's the he's the reason why PSG is not playing Champions League next season. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Thomas, I'm going to throw something out here. I'm going to throw something out here. Rather than if we look at the top, if we look at the goalkeeper's number one choice uh, across the board, these guys are all very good. Uh, Popescu, uh, Adrian's boy, uh, Heinevetter, Mickler, and Omayer. But if we look at goalkeeping duos, and I always think in something like the final four, duos will be the could be the key. Then Heinevetter Stokel is the best goalkeeping duo in the in the event by by a sweet mile. I don't agree. Remember Sifford, where what he does, what he did with not last year. Remember he he, he you know he, he put Nantes in the the H EHF Cup final on his own and he's having a very great time in Montpellier this uh, this season. You know he played uh, yeah, second half. Remind us what happened Nantes in the final last year? I didn't hear you. Remind us what happened to Nantes in the EHF Cup final last year? Yeah, they lost, but still. Oh, okay. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, Sifford is having a very great, great time in Montpellier this season. He did a very great match against PSG uh, last Thursday. So okay. I, I think it's close. The, you know, the... Uh, Omeya and Sifford are very close to uh, Stockholm and uh, uh, Einwetter. Um, and just, just following up on what, what Tom said about um, goalkeeper duels, goalkeeper duels, it's obviously, you know, two tough matches just within um, 24 hours. Who's got the, you know, from your guys' points of view, who's got the, you know, the deepest squad, the, the you know, the squad that can manage like this um, tough task of having to play um, two matches just within one day, so to say? I would say Montpellier. From when you when you look at the squad and uh, Kevin, maybe I'm wrong, but most of the players or nearly all players are fit at the moment. So yeah. from the from the alternatives on the bench, Montpellier should have the biggest squad. Yeah, I agree with you. 
Uh, there are no injured players in Montpellier at the moment, so uh, Montpellier have got the big, biggest squad, definitely. Yeah. Okay, they've got the biggest squad, Thomas, right? But they've got uh, Wissam Hamam, who really doesn't have the legs anymore, you know, who's in the defense. Uh, they've got uh, Isam Tej, that if he's defending anywhere, he's worth at least 10 goals in that position for the other team. So they have got fantastic players like Gigu, who I'd forgotten to mention earlier, Kaptichnik, you know, Grebi at Combray. They do have the deepest squad, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have the better players. You know what I mean? I mean, just because you've got 14 guys who are names doesn't mean that you've got 14 guys that are absolutely brilliant. That's that, that's the way I would throw it out there. And uh, again, and again, I would say that if Berlin are fifth in the Bundesliga with a bunch of young guys who are in their early 20s as the extras, and by the way, no one has mentioned Bjorn, the, uh, the Swedish connection over there, Peterson on the left wing, Zachrysson and uh, and Nielsen. I mean, no one has mentioned them. And apparently, my sources in Germany, who is not Bjorn, by the way, tell me that they are having an absolutely magnificent season, these guys. Especially Peterson. There you go. Oh, who, by the way, won the Champions League last year. Well, well, Tom, it's, you know, I think it's time to put a name out there. Who's going to win it? It's time, well, you know, because we're running out of time. Are we really? Uh, let yeah. the other guys go first. Let the other guys go first, and I'll give you my answer at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, come on, Adrian, you go first. Who's going to win it? Well, I'll uh, I'll think that Montpellier will uh, will beat Constanza in the first game, and Fuchs uh, beat uh, Pixaget in the second one. So the final will be won by Montpellier. Yeah. I would say the same the same teams in the final. But uh, after the second extra time, uh, Ica Romero scores the decisive goal for Füchse to win. Well, that's a very precise uh, prediction here, a precise prediction. Kevin, what do you think? I think I'm going to wave the flag and say Montpellier is going to win the EHF Cup. Okay, well, Chan, now it's your turn. You can't, you know, can't hide. Can't hide anymore. I, I, I refuse to hide on this, Thomas. Um, okay, in the first game, Constanta will be beaten by whoever they're playing against, Montpellier. And in the second game, Seged will be beaten by Berlin. And I agree 100% with Bjorn, except that it will come down to one penalty in the last 10 seconds to Montpellier to draw the game, to bring it to extra time, and their player will miss and Berlin will win. <laughs> in fact, Iker, Iker Romero might actually be in goal when he... <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Berlin will win. I think Berlin will just have enough to win. Well, guys, it's only going to take us another 120 hours, um, five days, and then we'll know who's going to be the EHF Cup um, champion of 2014. Tom, you're going to be there commentating the games. Um, <laughs> so everyone who's watching it, please also watch it on EHF TV uh, next weekend. Bjorn, you're going to be there writing for us. Um, so also please follow our coverage on eurohandball.com. Um, Kevin, I think you're going to be there as well, writing for um, Hand News. Adrian, yes. are you going to make the way as well? Unfortunately, I won't be able to, to join uh, Constanza in Berlin. That's the way it, uh, it is. Right, so we'll have we'll have three people following it live in Berlin and one definitely following it from Romania. Thanks guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good night and see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.